Hello everyone, this is Will. And this is Alex. And welcome back to another episode of They Mostly Come Out at Night. Mostly. Oh my god, I love this movie. Alright. This is absolutely fantastic. So we have a lot to say. <laughs> oh, too much to say, man, I think. I'm excited. I'm like genuinely excited about this. So, <clears throat> I'm, let's just get that out of the way. The, the movie's name is Inframan. From yes. 1975, but I think first we should talk about, like, just give some context to what this is and why it exists. Okay. And also, in a way, why I picked it. Alright, so so go ahead. I don't, don't remember what the exact name is of these movies, but essentially, in the 60s and early 70s in, in Japan, they started making these movies about, like, guys in silly suits fighting like monsters and shit um there was like Cayman Rider mm-hmm. there was Ultraman um the most well known is... is right now Power Rangers well uh and in, in Japan it's uh Sentai yeah so it's uh you know something Sentai and then something Rangers yeah so it's like uh you know, you got Power Rangers in America, which was based off of, um, I, it, I'm escaping the first word, but it was something Sentai yeah. Zoo Ranger. Yeah. So, Zoo Ranger was the footage that they used for the original Power Rangers yeah. show in the 90s, and there was this huge boom of, like, these super-powered teams, mm. or the super-powered guy that rode a motorcycle around, like, in Kamen Rider. Yes. So, like, there's always, like, this super-powered thing. So, China is so, like, hey, we need to get yeah. on board with this shit. So, there's more than that. Um, this is 1975. It's produced by Shaw Brothers, which is, they were, at the time, one of, if not the biggest studio in Hong Kong. And they saw, like, that... And they decided, let's take that and just add in a shitload of awesome kung fu. Because yeah. almost every movie that Shaw Brothers made were martial arts movies. Mm-hmm. So they decided, let's take all that, because we already have all these actors, and put them in this. Yeah. And why did I choose this movie? Because Will is a huge fan of this stuff. Yeah. I love Super Powered Teams. I have a huge collection of Sentai mechs. Uh, sorry, I, I call them Sentai mechs. Uh, I am looking me- at them with my own eyes. Megazords, if you will. Uh, Will's a huge fan of Power Rangers. I am a gigantic fan of Power Rangers, anything Sentai. Um, I have been a fan since I was five years old. I've never grown out of it. I fucking love this shit. I live for this shit. So this was a movie... Made for you. Tailor-made for me. Because it's not just the sentai stuff there's another thing in here that is made for you and that is all that kung fu i love it it's so i love action i love super powered like human beings that like dress up in ridiculous suits i love everything about this yeah it is it is it is my fandom this is like why we watched it yeah it's not even that low rated i don't it's not it's a very um well it's very love hate because people who don't quote unquote get it hate this movie so would you say we picked it because it's like kind of controversial well controversial it's definitely or... a b movie well I, yeah and it's definitely fair. a cult film but it's also like it's one of those movies that you know i would i would guesstimate that 90 percent of the planet would watch this movie and would be absolutely fucking baffled they'd probably turn it off by what they're witnessing yeah so when I first watched this movie a while back, I didn't finish it, but I I knew. I just knew I am going to put this on the list and we are going to watch this on the podcast because you have to see this. And I was Fair right. Enough. I was right. Now, I I had heard about this movie and you kept telling me about it a little bit, about when we if we were going to watch it or not. Yeah, I and hyped it up. I was like, okay, this, this is like exciting me because this is like exactly what I want to see. This is exactly, like, what I need. And, like, it was I the... had no idea what to expect, but my god, this movie is fucking, <laughs> fucking beautiful. It's great. 
It was the joy you needed. It was. Like, I enjoyed every second of this movie. No, it's... It's just a goddamn entertaining fucking kung fu superpower beatdown romp through fucking Chinese monster fucking... Insanity. It's great. It's awesome. I just wish there was a franchise. Me too. But alas, I don't think the world was ready. But now we have to get into it and Mm -hmm. actually uh, break down what this movie's all about. And it's great. So it starts out with this really groovy, like, hero music and, like, this psychedelic, like, weird, like, patterns going around. Yeah. But each one of them turns around to, infer- like, yeah. becoming Inframan. And uh, it just shows Inframan, like, flipping and, like, you know, doing, his, doing thing. his flying shit and all that stuff. I'm just like, this is, this is already badass. And then there's this, like, van... With a bunch of kids in it. And a fucking, like, giant, like, a fucking, like, dragon monster just flies over them. Yeah, and then lands on the road. And and then then the road just cracks in half. And then the kids get out, run out of the van as the guy doesn't get out. And the van just, like, flies down the cliff. Now I thought, okay, they're going to investigate this, like in most monster movies. But no! It just just goes zero, from zero to a hundred in, like... 0.2 0.2 seconds, and like the next scene is just a city on fire with explosions with... and people on fire <laughs> falling and jumping out of windows. Like, you'll realize if you ever watch this movie, like, they waste no fucking time. They just, they just fucking go for it. They know what they want to do and they just go. It's efficient. It's, it's great. There is no fat. There is literally, like, we've watched movies that, like, take their time with certain things. Oh, and, like, God. There's, like, of that really slow, boring build-up to things. Uh-huh. This, no build-up. There's just, like, go, 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 go. It cuts out all the fat. Exactly. Anything that's not moving the plot along is just thrown into the dumpster. So there's explosions everywhere, like, everything's in complete chaos, and a city burns through the ground. And we then And we see... get a... We get this, like a sat, like a picture, a thing of a satellite, and this guy coming up to. The, the, oh yeah, this car like pulls these like drives these scientists up to it, and they walk in, and we get the beautiful set. It is clearly a set, which is makes it even more charming. There are so many scientific thingamabobs. There's like so many light, different like colored lights. And, like, glass globes everywhere. I love it. Light panels on the ceiling. Just, like, a rotating, like, center base that just, like, rotates around the The communication the arrays are, like, disco balls. Yeah. I love it. The communica- And the communication things are, l- like, little light diodes inside of a, like, a glass globe. Like a disco ball. Yeah. I... It's beautiful. I- I'm a sucker for, like, practical effects and stuff. And practical sets, so I I so I watch this and I'm just like, all these sets are just. Remember how good it used to be. It's it's so, like, ridiculous, but at the same time so creative. And the we'll get to the best set, which is the villain set, which we're is just about to fucking. Fi- we're about to find out like they're outside of their lair. Beautiful. So. So there's a bunch of earthquakes, and they uh, they decide to get on the like big telescope, and like search it out. Cause they they find out that some uh, there's like a volcano blowing up, and they're like there hasn't been any activity at this volcano in a thousand years. So they look, look at it. They look at the mountain, and the earthquakes like reveal a hidden base, which is two giant monster skulls, and the monster skulls are like the entrance. Yep, and one of them, like, they both open their eyes, and then all of a sudden we see this, like, dragon thing, like, superimposed onto this <laughs> print, and then it turns towards the camera and turns into a Chinese woman. Princess Dragon Mom. Yes, Princess is, Dragon Mom. That is, is what, the name. Now, we watch this dubbed, so it could be a different name in Chinese, but for the dub, it's Princess Dragon Mom. Princess Dragon Mom. Yep, and, and she warns Earth that she's going to destroy all of it. Yes. <laughs> like, she's just like, I'm, you know what, I'm just going to fucking destroy the whole Earth. And I like, love... Like, for no no real reason. She's just like, fucking... I'm just going to... 
Who needs reason? She's dude? just like, you know what? I'm just gonna destroy Earth, okay? She's just salty. Yeah. So she's just gonna destroy Earth, and we see like. So, <laughs> the sci- they after she like warns them and everything, uh, the scientist is like, "Where's like blah 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 like the two like the two guys." And then we go back to a burning building, and they're, like, trying to escape it. And one of them, like, grabs a baby and, like... And jumps out jumps of, like... out of, like, a two-story building. With the baby in his arms. And just lands safely on the ground. I'm it's like, this is... Great. <laughs> it's already incredible. But then we get... They show off all the monsters. Because it cuts back to the villain's um, lair. And I fucking love this set. Yeah, it's it, a bunch of skulls, like, in the walls. It's like, and, like, what's funny is, it's like the good guy set, yeah. but just, like, Switched. the opposite. Yeah, exactly. So there's, like, a dragon fountain with red water. There's all these skulls and, like, the, the like, center, like, console. It's, in, it's like, it's shaped like, it's, like, triangular and instead has, of round. And it's all jagged and stuff. Yeah. And then it has this golden, like, like throne on yeah. it. There's, like, this interrogation chair with a fucking giant... Like, it's a laser, but it looks like a cannon it's just e- pointed straight it, at it. It's even complete with a fucking trap door that leads to a bottomless pit that has a lava pit at the bottom. Yeah, I love this it's shit great. so much. They say bottomless pit, but it also has a lava pit at the bottom, which at is the bottom. weird. But, like, it's so it's not bottomless, but whatever. But we get the monsters. They matter. show off all the monsters, and it's just these ridiculous fucking designs. I love it. And then we get a meeting with all the guys, and they're like, oh, well, I don't know much about Dragon Mom, but I know, like, she's, like, evil and shit, basically. <laughs> okay, it's, it's essentially, all you need to know is the whole government is like, you have all of our resources, do what you gotta do. Yeah, like, you can do whatever you want. And the scientist is like, okay, I'm gonna make Inframan. So, he starts making Inframan, and um, he gets this one dude there. He, he's, like, one of their special operatives. And he's like, I want... He's like, you know, I want you to become Inframan. And the guy's like, okay. Yeah, he's like, he, like no hesitation whatsoever. Well, it's funny, he's, after he's he like, says this, he's like, it'll be painful and you might die. He's like, okay. He's like, I'm, it's worth it. I want to do it. I want to be Inframan. That, okay, so <laughs> I was thinking in this scene, that would be me. Like, that would literally be me. They'd be like, you can be a superhero. I'll do it. But we didn't, I, I don't care. Because... But what, I don't care. Do it. You see, like, a diagram on the wall of what he looks like, and you would just look at that and be like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Be like, I don't even care what you have to do. Make me that. Sign me the fuck up. Please. It didn't even look I'm that I'm not painful. an angsty teenager or a, spec, a special operative, but please, for the love of God, make me whatever is on that wall. The idea is, like, <laughs> that he will replace, like, his insides with, like... Machinery. With thingamabobs. Yeah. I'm not calling it machinery. I'm just going to call it thingamabobs. It is thingamabobs, yeah. Because when he starts... So he starts, like, transforming him. And then um, these... Well, we also get a scene where Dragon Mom speaks to her demon army and is, like, sends out two of her yeah. operatives to go try and fuck shit up. Don't forget, we also see um, She-Demon. Oh, yeah, so she, she commands She-Demon to command two of the yeah. the mutations, as they call them. She-Demon... But they're, they're monsters, but... Is, um, She-Demon is a Chinese lady who has, um, glo- who wears, like... Who has, like, these hands with eyeballs in them. And wears, like... This... Like a midriff and, like, just a bra. Well, her bra is literally just two giant triangles. Like, silver cones. And, like, this, like... L- leather like skirt it's fucking ridiculous it's great and she tells um these you know these monsters to attack and one of them is like this tentacle monster and they're like okay you have to go out and destroy inframan's facility yeah because i know they're building something in science there. headquarters yes so <laughs> you're right they call it science headquarters what a great name for a company i i mean like i said cut out all the fat yep so it's science headquarters <clears throat> so he starts attacking and like what he does is he goes underground and he just One grows. Of them. Well, yeah, he grows these giant tentacles and starts like just destroying the facility and like killing all these people. And we get and the other. So the other one, remember, he stops like a beetle in front oh, of the thing and like tips it up and then tips it around and then it explodes and then captures the guy. Yeah, and he takes him back to the base. He takes him back to the base while um, Tentacle Man 
we get scene upon scene of the <laughs> of a bunch of men being flung around by a giant green plastic fucking plastic tentacle. I, it's so glorious. <laughs> And being flung around and flying into science thingamabobs and exploding. And all while Inframan is being built. And, and when he's being built, you see, like, they superimpose, like, thingamabob, thingamabob parts onto, like... On his legs and his head and it's his It's, like, arm. symbolizing that the inside of him is being replaced. Which I don't get. They don't... They just point a laser and apparently that creates thingamabobs in his, in his body. Cut out the fat. Yeah. Because if they had to explain it, it would add like another two minutes to the movie, and we can't have that. <laughs> can't have that. Trim the fat, man. We don't want Trim any fat. fat. So, you know, they're, everyone's getting fucked up. Yeah. And then so he becomes Inframan. And... And he instantly <sighs> knows exactly what to do. We get the awesome music. Yep. And he flies the fuck out and, and just fucks chops. him up. He like chops one of his tentacles off and then like... Chops the other one, finds his heart right away, explodes it, like... <laughs> and it, like, reveals his real form. And he, like, fucks him up. He just fucking just destroys him instantly. And he just... We, well, uh, it's like... Through a bunch of choreographed, badass kung fu <laughs> scenes. It's like... Because, like... I mean, I, I've seen the other stuff, like... Ultraman or Kamen Rider or whatever. And, like, the fight scenes in those are way more, like kind of stilted they can be i mean With, in the new Cayman Rider, yeah. it's not that bad but. but in this era but in this era yes even even i will argue even sentai was a little more like like stinted it was like no a, it was a lot slower those were the less choreographed those fight scenes were like just really basic just like punch 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 yeah whereas in this if you've seen like 70s martial arts movies from hong kong where people are just flying around like crazy and doing like tons of kicks and shit it's picture of that but it's men in suits and like guys like flying like just obscene distances yeah. on like clearly wires but like they're just like being dragged it's all over the place beautiful it's awesome and he and it like he's he just has shit that he fires off yeah because he just he blows um <laughs> He blows up Tentacle Man. He scares the shit out of him with fireworks. And then when he tries to fly up, he die, He does his... Uh... Oh, his little... Uh, he, he, like, crosses his arm. His, so he crosses his right arm and then puts it against his left elbow. And, like, his... And that fires his... left his... elbow arm is going up. Yeah. And it fires a fucking laser. And he blows him the fuck up. It's great. It's beautiful. Oh, my God. And then, so they take. He that. did scare him with fucking fireworks, didn't he? Yeah. Because he surrounds him with, well, they're supposed to be like like Explosives. flame flame rockets. But he tries to escape, and he's like, "Nah, bitch, I got you." Laser, and then he explodes. And then they take the bad guys take the prisoner, and they put him in the brainwashing machine, <laughs> which is the giant laser with the horns on it that looks like a dragon. I, I, all of their shit has like dragon horns on it. It all looks like demons or dragons, and it's because beautiful. they're bad guys. Yes, yeah, exactly. I love it. They, they My were... favorite is the boat. Yeah. Like, oh God. Which has the greatest shot in cinema history, by the way. <laughs> I'm not joking. Okay. It is like fucking. Oh my God. People talk about those great shots in movies. Well, I'm sorry. Inframan beat you. This is the best. Cause we'll get to that though. You should make on our the YouTube uh, picture when you do. I I think I will. You should. I, like, you I'm really gonna do should. something with it. Okay, like, please do. Either it's gonna be on the YouTube or something. I will use that so that shot. Okay. <laughs> so the doc the scientist while the other guy's gone so, talks to Inframan about how well, he can use. Don't forget. So when when they're in, he's in the brainwashing machine. Oh yeah, it starts showing his skull. There's like a tube that's like a TV, and it's like showing what's happening it, to his brain. It shows his skull, then it shows like the inside of his brain, then it shows his brain. And then his brain gets like swirled. And then it like and it has like these vines on it, and like part of it becomes red, and part of it becomes blue, and then it all becomes red. And then, and then his eyes go green. And it gives him green eye powers. Yeah, <laughs> knockout green eye powers. <laughs> 
Which has one of my favorite moments in the whole movie. <laughs> Trim the fat, man. You don't need to explain this shit. No, Kate. who the fuck cares, dude? As long as like we're not asking too many questions, it's fine. So the scientist, before the guy returns, the scientist is talking to Inframan about how he can defeat the evil, like the, the evil dragon. Thunderball fists. Yeah, he can use thunderball fists. But he's still like developing them. Yes. So he hasn't he hasn't given him thunderball fists, even though by that first scene, like we're both under the impression that he could beat the flying fuck out of anybody. Yeah. Regardless of if he he's has thunderball fists. Indestructible at this point. So, so the guy shows up. The prisoner, yeah, the prisoner that they took and brainwashed. His eyes are all fucked up. He's acting all weird. And, and he's, they're like, go get like, some rest. Oh, we just need to get some rest. So he, <laughs> he like, starts going down and, like, one, I, he just, wants to go into, like, he wants to go into the room where the Inframan schematics are. And so he, like, he knocks out the guy with his green, I thought he killed him at first, but okay, he so knocks he, out the guy with his green vision. And then he drags him into the room, but he's, like, face first. He's lying down face first. Okay, this is important. So the guy goes and like opens the vault. He and, opens a vault with the scientific thing of Bob. And he takes the scientific thing of Bob and like he takes pictures of it. And then the guy just rolls. <laughs> the guy he knocked out, or guy he killed, sorry, rolls over and just lays on his back. And then one <laughs> other guy comes down and sees like the guy's gun laying in the hallway. So the guy that becomes Inframan, it's a uh... yeah, yeah. So he opens the door and the guy, and he's like. Talking to the guy who's knocked out. He's like, where did he go? It was Su Ming. He's in there. He just so casually. just The like, guy who's laying on the fucking ground, who we thought was dead, is just like, it's Su Ming. He's over there. Yeah. He like, points. Super. Apparently, this wasn't just a knockout ray. It was a act casual as fuck ray. He points, too. Yeah. And then Su Ming is over there. So he flipped over just to be more comfy. Yeah. Now, I, this probably is the dubbing, but, like, it was beautiful. It's fucking glorious. So, fuck it, the guy, that Inframan, well, but he's not Inframan at the moment, but he goes and he chases the guy down with a motorcycle and he crashes oh, yes. into him on the sand dunes. Yes. And they run up a sand dune and then roll right back down the fucking sand dune. It's not even dune. a sand dune, it's like a giant mountain. Yeah, they just, and they just roll, roll down. the fuck down it. Like, casually. And then... The other, I don't even know how the fuck to describe the it's bug a, the, monster. It's it, like a red bug, like the, a spider. Almost. The bug shows up. Yeah, with the army of skeleton dudes. Yeah, I love this costume, by the way. The, the skeleton dudes are in all black leotards with these white, like plastic, like so. It's like skeleton out, things. outlines of like their their body. Their skeleton. Ribs. It almost looks like. Well, quote unquote ribs. It doesn't look yeah. like ribs, but it's like these plastic white straps. Yeah. And then they have these black helmets, but where their head is, where their face is, is like a skull. It's a skull. I love it. And then it's great because they have giant fucking horns coming out the the helmets. If I still dress up for Halloween, I want this. <laughs> I shit. am going to wear this outfit. I swear to God. I would. I want all of these outfits. It's beautiful. But th- there's and then we get another. Fucking awesome fight. Just people, like, hundreds of people kicking and punching the shit out of each other. And the guy doesn't even turn into Inframan and it's still cool. Like, he's just fighting oh, yeah. and everything. But then he finally turns into Inframan. And then, like, this weird, like, hairy monster shows up. Mm-hmm. And they start fighting, like, by a lake. And, he, and the monster kicks Inframan into the lake. And then shoots lasers, and there's, like, explosions all over the yeah, place. Yeah, he shoots lasers from his hands. But, uh-uh, Inframan ain't having none of that nah. shit. He flies out of the water. Zaps hit, him. Zaps him into the water, and then fucking explodes him in the water. Just, like, just yeah. like that. Like, no, no fucking none. problem. And then he has to go take care, take care, care of, of the, the bug. bug. The bug guy. The so fucking spider bug. He beats the shit out of him, and then the bug guy is beating the shit out of the other good guys. And the bug becomes big he grows he becomes a big boy but don't worry because inframan looks back and instantly knows exactly what to do because after the bug man squashes a guy inframan gets angry and he becomes big. and he grows and they fight a little bit and then he just picks the bug guy up and throws him into a fucking power plant and there's a giant explosion 
We got a kaiju fight, baby. And then, and then the bug guy becomes all fucking small after being thrown into a power plant. And he squashes And Inferman steps on him. And there's like this green goo that explodes. Uh, I fucking love this movie. It does not even deal with any like story bullshit. Who it's just cares? like whatever. It's so simple. I love it. But don't worry, it, it gets even more ridiculous. And the queen watches the bug get squished. She's like, he's destroying my monsters, damn it. Yeah, she's like, oh, fu- give me the schematics. We're going to find a weakness. Oh, he has a hand weakness. And he has a hand weakness and then apparently a solar weakness. Oh, I my- mean, don't fucking worry because, n- <laughs> I mean, spoiler <laughs> alert, nothing fucking happens. Nothing stops him. Nothing stops him for man. He's fucking awesome. Because he's fucking in for man. That's why nothing stops him. But then she sends the drill monster, which is my personal favorite monster in the movie. Mm. Because I want you to describe this monster. He is like Godzilla, but thick. And by thick, he also has no neck. It's just body head. And then spikes going on either side of his and head. He has spikes on like both sides of his back and head. His mouth is round, and there's just like teeth like all and, through it. And he, I love his hands because he has one one hand is a drill, and the other hand is like, like a this giant giant metal like fist. It's not even a fist. It's like a claw. It's like a fucking like. It looks like a crane game claw. It it looks like a. The, you know what it looks like? It looks like the tractor's like a that thing on a tractor. That pushes stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's like he has that on his hand because yeah. it's huge. I know. And he doesn't stop laughing, and it's fucking. It's so goofy, but he has. But they have a plan. They're gonna blow up the scientific. The, the what do they call it? the science, science headquarters? Science headquarters. They're not gonna blow up the science headquarters. They're gonna blow up the power transformer. Oh, that's right. And so, like... so thick Godzilla man and um, brainwash man bring a possibly the biggest bundle of dynamite. It is a comically large bundle of dynamite I've ever it's witnessed. Fucking huge. They bring it into. It reminds me of if you ever seen the mask. The, yeah. the 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 yes the fucking like bundle of dynamite they use at the end. It's of even the bigger. Mask. Yeah, it's bigger than that. It's fucking goofy as shit, and he has to carry it with like, it's like barely fitting into his hand. Yeah, when he's carrying it, and then like so we get a, like a dot like we get three siblings. Yeah, and the girls talking about like oh I want to be Inframan like all this. My stuff. favorite like, thing is that everyone in this world knows who Inframan is instantly. Like he. Yeah. Like, even when he was saving the science research facility or whatever... People are like, Inframan! They're like, oh my god, it's Inframan! It's like, he just fucking came out. How the hell do you know who the fuck he is? He's so awesome, he already has a fan base. Exactly. And a little girl want, wants to be Infra Girl. So, like, she's play-fighting with her brother, and they find this cave, and then they get captured. Yep. And the then... brother and his, like, older sibling get captured. And then Inframan hears from the little girl... So he goes in there, and he sees the dynamite. And he sees it, like, going... Like, so it's lit, and it's going towards the dynamite. Like, any normal person would just snuff it out. But this is Inframan. Snuffing it out is too dumb. So the guy sees it, turns into Inframan, picks up the dynamite... Flies through the, like, ceiling... And fucking just tosses the dynamite (laughs) through the air. Because snuffing it is too lame. Yeah, I mean, you're Inframan. What else would you do? Throw it the fuck you away. fucking just throw it before it explodes. And then after this, he gets the fists. What is it? Thunderball fists. Yep, so he gets the Thunderball fists, which are just two, like, it, two black gauntlets with fucking spikes on the, like, the knuckles. That fly off. They, now, it's fucking elbow rockets, basically. Now, not only do they do that... They also have, like... They have little fucking blades in them. This will be important in the last fight scene. But what I wasn't aware is that these blades can fly. So I knew that, because he said it was projectile okay. blades. But yeah. I think you were just too ingrained in the fucking awesome to, too... to, know, yep. to notice. I was too baffled. Exactly. And so he's, he's even more awesome now. Yeah, so now he's even more impossible to kill. And now they're planning the final, like, attack. 
Uh, but we get a sentimental scene between the scientist and his daughter. This is important. And what, when what his imp- most important day was, was the day she was born. The day she was born. But this is very important, see, because the immediate next scene is her getting kidnapped. She gets caught by the baddies. So it's like they had to get that one scene in there right before she gets kidnapped, and we get into the final, like... So I love this scene, too, after this, because the scientist is like, okay, here's the plan. We're just going to go in and fuck shit up, basically. Like, there is basically no plan. It's just infiltrate the Well, basically, base. what he does is he, he goes there first without any help. But it doesn't matter because immediately after he gets captured, um, Inframadness comes in. But here's the important thing. So he goes in there on a boat. The boat has... So this is the scientist going to get his daughter because yes. Dragomon wants to make a deal where she's trading his daughter for more intel on Inframadness. Yeah. And that basically they give up. Yeah. He stops fighting and they let the Earth get fucked up. Yeah. So they go on a boat. And the boat has a dragon head on its front. And two tails coming up the fins. But it just looks like paper mache onto the boat. It's beautiful. It's awesome. But we get my favorite shot of all time. I want you to describe this shot. I don't even know how to compare this. For first of all, we get this wacky music. Almost like road trip music, you know? And then we just get a shot of... <laughs> the scientist in the middle. The scientist in the middle... On his right is a skeleton man, and then on his left is the thick Godzilla man, and they are sitting there so casually. I love thick Godzilla is just like chilling. He's thick just, Godzilla he's is just literally like leaning back and leaning front, back and like, like this. He's like like crossing his arms and like he's just like the most chill yeah. guy on the planet. Yeah, and the guy, the skeleton man, is just casually driving the boat, mm-hmm. and then the scientist is in the middle, just looking at both of them, like baffled. So they get to the base, and he says he's not going to work for her and everything. She gets pissed off and kills the brainwashed guy by... It's like, look what I'll do to you. Throwing him down, like, the bottom... The quote-unquote bottomless pit that also happens to have a bottom, which is lava. And sure, they just roast him. Just roast him right there. He's like, I'll he do did that. literally nothing wrong for her, and she just was, like, fucking dead. But then she, um... She takes the scientist and his daughter... And decides that the way she's gonna fuck with them is by freezing them over and over. Yep. Because she just deep, freezes them. Deep freezing them, and then unfreezing them, and then deep freezing them until they'll, they'll agree with until her. Until they get sick of it. And she also tells him that we're gonna stop him from him because we're going to bring in clouds that block, that out the block sun. his fucking solar energy. It's. They. <sighs> It's I love fool. how horribly this plan goes. It's for a her. fool's game. It fucking is great. How like non-existent this even affects Inframan. It's great. Non-existent is right. Like he does not even fucking yeah. blink an eye to the sun disappearing. He shows up and just beats the fuck out of everybody. So all this, all the fucking scientific guys yeah. start showing up. All these special operatives start showing up and just fucking everything up. Everybody is fighting. Inframan guy, before he turns into Inframan, runs a motorcycle into Thick Godzilla, and <laughs> <laughs> remember the ragdoll effects. He like he like turns it around and then like rooms it into and him, launches it, it launches <laughs> it into the guy, just like, poof, <laughs> just like like ragdoll effects, like down to and the then ground. This other like monster shows up who looks like if anyone's seen the movie the kaiju movie Daimajin. Yeah. He looks like fucking Daimogen. Yeah. And he shows up. He and breathes his, fire. He breathes fire. He can also turn invin- invisible. But Inframan, well, he turns into Inframan and starts beating the living fuck out of both of them. Yeah, he starts fighting both monsters at the same fucking time. Yeah. One of them turns invisible. But they they activate the clouds. The black smoke. <laughs> this is the greatest. And nothing happens. Nothing fucking happens. Inframan is totally fine. But what happens is Inframan gets pissed off and activates... His rocket kick. The feet. He, like, he flies in the air and, like, sits down almost. And then, like, rockets start coming out of his feet. And then he rockets... He flies towards the... And blows and, both and of them the fuck up. Yeah, fucking from the abdomen. They just blow the fuck up. It's beautiful it's great and then he runs in and i don't know what happens here because it's cut so weirdly 
He, like, runs in and cuts, 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 cuts. He's captured. And then he's immediately, like, captured. And then they fling him into the bottomless pit. But he, he doesn't... He holds on because it's in for man. He yeah. doesn't fucking die. And eventually he gets out and just beats the fuck out of everyone. And this scene is so beautiful. It's great. Because we get the two fucking, like... <laughs> Spike ball, like slinky twins. Okay, that's after. So first, he's fighting in like the bad guy HQ. Oh, that's Remember right. Remember where we find out that the water is explosive? Oh yeah, he fucking kicks everyone into it and it just explodes. My favorite is that at some point, every single bad guy starts exploding. And he fights uh, she demon, which is no threat at all, really, <laughs> and throws her down the fucking. He pit. cuts off. No, he cuts off. <laughs> oh, her yeah, hand. That's right. He he flings the like the razors towards her hands as she's trying to shoot lasers at him. And cuts off. Cuts her, her hands and punt and just punts her into the fucking <laughs> lava pit. <laughs> I fucking love it. You're not like he punts her. He fucking punts her into the goddamn bottom of the pit. She screams and falls down the pit and then roasts. <laughs> hey, so he fucks everyone up in and, there. And my favorite is that at some point the filmmakers decided that every bad guy in this scene is just gonna explode. Cause everyone just starts exploding. Like they fall out of the water, they explode, they hit a they hit a science thingamabob they explode they go into water they explode we also find out that 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 mind control cannon it also doubles as just a regular cannon because eventually you can like move it everywhere and it starts shooting at him and he just knocks it over (laughs) he just knocks it over like it's paper (laughs) well that's probably because it is but i mean (laughs) it's fucking beautiful then he fucking, so he kills everyone in that room and goes into the ice room where, this where little... the doctor and his daughter are getting tor- my second, freeze tortured. This is my second favorite design. And we get the slinky fucking spike ball monsters. So their head is like a spike that it can like, it slinkies off. And they have a, a like a spike ball fist, like a mace. This is my fist second that favorite. That can slinky. This is my second favorite design. And this scene is so fucking awesome. Because they just keep shooting their fucking, like, like their slinky arms at him. What you get is, like, him close quarters beating the shit out of one of them while the other one slinkies their head at him. And he immediately dodges it. And he dodges it, counters it. One of them, like, almost, like, almost hangs himself, like, on his slinky head. Because he gets, like, he shoots the slinky and Inframan punches it so it, like, goes up. It, like, wraps around a... Getting, like, and killer. he's just hanging in there. Oh my god, I love these. And my favorite. Scenes. Do you remember the part when he starts punching him, and then he gets up and he punches him and he gets up. Yeah, punches him, gets up, punches him, gets up, punches him, gets up, and then like super punches him so he stays down. And then like I love it. He like tangles one of his like their arms and their heads together, and then like Dragon Mom comes out and like starts like beating the shit yeah. out of him. Well, and they, then well, he first he, he he beats her up at first. But then she shoots ice at him. And he freezes. And I'm just like, okay, how is he going to get out of this? Because we know he's going to win. And again, you've noticed by now that they trim the fat because he escapes this in like no time at all. Because he remembers something that didn't happen. That apparently the, the professor once told him, if you ever get frozen, specifically, this is very specific, if you ever get frozen, activate your missiles. Trim the fat, because they never, yeah. they don't have to explain this. He takes out these missiles and throws them right down, and they thaw him. They thaw him out, and then he, the the Spike brothers, like, shoot their fucking heads and arms, and he just tangles them all and up. And throws them back at them and blows them the fuck up. Yep, they both disappear into nothingness. Well, at first they light on fire... And then they, like, turn into red, and then they just vanish. They just disappear from our plane of existence. Yeah, it's fucking great. And then he's fighting Dragon Mom, who turns literally into a dragon. And they fight, and then he's... Oh, this is the... This is the best. She just stands there. He cuts her head off. She grows another one. He cuts it off. She grows another one. He cuts it off. I... (laughs) This goes on. Yeah, Literally, my like favorite ten heads. is that like eventually they're just like a pile of heads at her feet. Like, it's fucking insane. And then fucking Inframan gets pissed off. He's like, you know what? Fuck, Fuck this you. shit. Fucking thunder fister, and then fucking well, that, sounds, that sounds wrong. He fucking throws his thunder fist at her, 
and then zaps her the fuck into oblivion. She just vanishes. And then, you know, he unfreezes the, the professor and his daughter. They escape. And the set explodes. Everything fucking explodes. They're going away on a boat. And then this little girl is like, do you think the monsters will be back? And then the professor's like, even if they will, it won't matter because we have Inframan. And we get the awesome music. And then they dr- fucking boat out into the sunset. And the end. The end. This, the end. I, like, I'm sorry we had to explain, like, we explained that so quickly, but that's literally it. Like, I, we have, n- like, nothing else to ex- describe in the movie. Like, that is one of the shortest descriptions of the movie we ever did. But that's because it's good. It doesn't fucking it. It just trims the fat. There's it nothing does. to like. There's nothing to like explain here. Like it, I mean, like it's four, just cut and dry action. Forty minutes of it is 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 men in suits beating the shit out of each other. And that's beautiful. And it's beautiful. Okay. Like, and awesome. I felt like a fucking kid again. This literally feels. Well, I already said this. It feels like kids playing with action figures it does it feels like when i would take like my power rangers action figures and just like fucking throw them together like acting and pretend like they were, they were having like insane fights yeah i would have like epic fights in my room but like and someone took that and made it into a movie it's great it is it's goddamn beautiful and it's made by grown men which is even better but my favorite part but all this is the complete lack of cynicism. Oh no, yeah, it takes itself very seriously. It like there is nothing there's no cynicism, no like Well, it's not even like goofing on itself. It's not, it's not. spoofing itself. It's not like saying this is goofy, like this is like this is just an action film that they wanted yeah. to make and they just made it. They just did whatever not, they wanted. It's not mocking itself. It's not mocking the genre. It is Full tilt. Yeah. And I love it. And that's the best thing about it. Because, um, they don't, I don't know, they don't make them like this. Not anymore. Like, so, this is like an action movie where you just, like, you just don't even care about, like, the plot. You just have fun. You have to. It's just fun. You have to. If you can't have fun, like, you will hate this fucking movie. Well, a lot of people do. That there are probably people, why there's a cult following. There are people who think this is absolutely awful. But again, like I said, if you can't just shut the fuck up and have fun without any cynicism... No, I'm sorry. This might be inflammatory towards our podcast, but I think anyone who doesn't have fun with this movie is just a wet blanket and can't like turn their brain off and just enjoy a movie for a while. If you can't enjoy this, then, like, I don't know, you... You might look. Look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a very dark person. I would probably consider myself a cynic, but I fucking love this shit. Yeah, this is. See, so you say you live for movies where the director tries really hard and it's just a total train wreck, right? Yeah. Like I live for these kind of movies where people take like childlike joys of like playing with action figures and creating these epic battles and like try and make a film. That's that way. Yeah. Like, I, clearly, directors have done it better. Like, you know, I've been a huge fan of Godzilla, and there's some dark spots in Godzilla, too. We've already... We've already... Uh, we did one. Went through one. We did Which one. was fucking... Huh. But, well, I wouldn't even, like... I mean, I, I wouldn't even call this, like, badly made. No. Well, it was... It, it, the, chore- the, the choreography was really good. Like... Considering it's dudes in suits, like... It's f- and and when it was made, like this is way better than what they were doing over in Japan. So we were talking about like Sentai and like you go back and watch the seventies Sentai, and the fight scenes are just like these basic, basic like really slow. Yeah, kind of like not like they're. I mean, they're not. Sorry, I shouldn't say slow, but they're kind of like they are slow. But that's largely because they're, they're just kind of stagnant. Well, it's just that it's it's really obvious when you watch those that the actors in them don't know martial arts whereas in this they made a purpose of like okay we're gonna they're actually gonna do like actual martial arts insanity does inframan look stupid absolutely does that make it even better yes absolutely yes it makes it even better are the sets absolutely ludicrous yes but i love Does that make it even better yes 
Well, also they clearly like, made out of plastic, and I love I love the layers set because like. But it's when they're outside the lair, it's like all these like plastic dragon bones. And I like love it. These dragon caves but here's and the shit thing. like that. It's creative. Yeah. Like it's creativity, and it's real. It's it's a fucking insane dragon lair with like a fucking bottomless pit. I mean, and like a dragon fountain that has the water that if you touch it, it fucking explodes. Apparently. You know what it, it reminded me of, and like this is like kind of a newer example, but. The first Pacific Rim. Yeah. Because, like, that movie didn't really care about plot. Mm. It was just like, hey, you want to see a bunch of giant robots hit a bunch of fucking giant monsters? Here you go. And that was all you needed. For, like, two hours, you just got that shit. And that's why I love Inframan, because it's, like, just an hour and a half of just fucking balls-to-the-wall superpower beatdown action. And no, like, that's the thing is, no I... No romance, no fucking anything else, just... But I don't even... Even if they threw in a romance, like, whatever. Because for me, it's, like, just the complete lack of cynicism. Yeah. It's 100% earnest. There's no, like... I don't know. They they don't... I, I just don't think movies like this fly anymore. No. You know, it also reminded me of uh, the original... Like the American uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, mm. yeah. Uh, like that one, yeah. It didn't. It took itself like just as seriously as it needed to. Sort of. Like it spoofed itself a couple times, but like, like the villain. I mean, I haven't seen that movie in so long, but I do recall I, I, Ivan Ooze being pretty like. Dude, they end sassy. the movie with fucking he kicks him in the nuts. The, yeah, the Megazord kicks fucking Ivan Ooze yes. in the balls. Yes. Like, it's. That's amazing. The, the secret button. It is amazing. The secret we, uh, button is a swift kick to the nads. I mean, we will be watching that movie on this podcast. I hope so, because I love that movie. I still love that movie. I still watch it to this day. I, I, it was like one of my favorite movies growing up. I own it, so we won't even have to rent it I'm, or anything. I mean, I'm pretty sure like every single person my age loved that movie growing up. Yeah. It was like... It was like a rite of passage. Everyone had to. Yeah. You just, you just had to. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I just, like, uh, I wish I could have, like, watched this growing up, though, because this thing is just... I would have loved this movie growing mm -hmm. up. I mean, I love it now, but, like, you, I can imagine, like, a kid seeing this. Oh, Jesus. It's just great. It's Even just... Roger Ebert liked this movie. Do you know that? Because it's good. I mean, like, because it's not... It, like you said, it's earnest. It, it just, it captures kind of like a... Like a playing with your action figures yeah. type of feel, and that's my final thoughts. Is like it's just like it brings out like that childhood joy of a boy or a girl, like you yeah. know whoever you are, like playing with your action figures and like you know clanging them together and like creating these epic fights in your mind and like these layers that you built out of like styrofoam you found from like your mom's like packages and shit like that. I know yeah. I would build fortresses yeah. out of like VHS tapes. It's like that but someone it's like that but someone took that and committed it to film. Yeah, and it's beautiful. And, I want to own this movie. And it exists. It's great. And it's beautiful. And this movie should be cherished. I implore you, if you like anything related to this kind of genre, like giant monsters, fucking super powered people, uh team ups, well, it's not really a team up movie, yeah. but like like anything like Power Rangers or Godzilla or anything like that, please watch this movie cuz I think you will enjoy the hell out of it. You it's look it's only like 80 minutes. Even like critical people, just turn your brain off and just enjoy the movie. You know, you know what? Just shut the fuck up and have some goddamn fun. Just it's just fun. Have it's some just... fun with your life because like I've seen movies this year that are supposed to be like, oh, just turn your brain off. And I fucking hated them. I don't think those movies And really, I wanted to die. I don't think those movies really get it, Because you mentioned Pacific Rim. Oh, the second one? Oh, the second don't. one is a gigantic pile of shit. Well, because they put too much... They don't. They didn't get it. Like, you don't put story in, yeah. in films like this. It's, look, look, if you want to put a story in it, whatever. My issue is that it's, it's like cynical bullshit. Yeah. Like, why do we need, like, a whole new cast of dumb fucking kids that we don't give a shit about? 
why this? Why that? Why, like... Like I said, they don't really get their target on Why is it two hours long? Why, like... It's like why the, are there only three fight scenes? Compare, I don't know. Compare Inframan to, like, the Transformers movies. Seriously. That's not even a fair comparison. The, it's like, th- those movies are, like, three fucking hours long. And, like... Th- this, to me... If... I don't know. Just please make more movies like this. Please. Somebody. Someone, please make more movies like this. I would love to see them. I'm like, going to continue watching my Sentai. If you want to make... Because I love this yeah. kind of stuff. And Sentai is still ridiculous. Yeah. And Sentai is like this. This is why I love Sentai so much. Because it's exactly like this. It's people in suits fighting fucking giant monsters. It, yeah, sure, it's maybe the same every single episode. Um... But, like, it's so good. Like, the action has gotten so much better in the new Sentai series. Like, I just love it. I love everything about Sentai. It is, like, my perfect, like, action. Yeah, so good. Sorry. I I just I just love, like, anything like this. Anything with people in suits fighting each other, I am so down for. Yeah, and, and, I'm, coming, and I'm coming at this from a perspective of someone who doesn't, like, watch that stuff. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's 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 entertaining on a different level. Yeah, just the complete. It's so like childish and innocent. So you got like the inside perspective yeah. of like because I've watched tons of Sentai yeah. and I've watched a lot of Power Rangers, um, and then someone from the outside yeah. perspective. But like, I don't know. It's, it's it, just it's refreshing. It just shows like you can enjoy this movie without being too critical of it. It's refreshing. Exactly. And I know that like it's not it's not like. Because there are a lot of action movies, like older action movies, that are similar to this, where they are just very fun and very kind of, you know, earnest. There's no cynicism. But, like, I think it's just extra because I feel like so many action movies now are just n- so, like, like weirdly cynical. Yeah. Not cynical in, like, a, oh, we're trying to be dark way, but just cynical in, like, a fucking, like, just, like, I don't know. Like the Transformers movies. Yeah. They're not dark movies. It's not fucking Apocalypse Now. But, you know, still, like, you watch those movies and there's just that cynicism. Yeah. No, I get it. I don't know. Just please go on Amazon Prime if you have a subscription and watch this movie. And not just that. It is in in glorious HD. It looks really good. Those colors are popping. It's awesome. Because, like, I'm sure, I'm sure, like, if there's somewhere on the web floating around in, like, a non-HD version of this, and it probably looks like complete dog shit, but if you have Amazon Prime, look up Inframan, you will find it, it is in glorious HD, and it looks beautiful. It's great. Because all of those huge sets, just, they just pop out, like, beautiful. I love it. I live for these kind of movies. I hope there's more on this podcast. I'm sure there will be eventually, but probably not for a while. Because there wasn't a ton of these movies in the 70s. Yeah. But I am so excited for 1975. And thing is, like, this is also kind of like a just lightning in a bottle yeah. thing. Because, again, the situation of it is so weird. Like, Because, again, it's the only movie, Sentai movie, that came out of China. Yep. And I wish it would have franchised, but it didn't. And, you know, just some... A big Chinese studio was like, hey, this shit's popular. Let's try it. Let's fucking do it. And they did, and, and it's goddamn awesome. This is fucking awesome. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. This movie's great. And I, I'm i excited to continue the podcast from here, because, like, 1974, like... I still love doing the podcast, but my god, some of those movies were so fucking hard to get through. I mean, we'll get to those. And like, I know we will. Let me just have this moment, okay? No. Let me just have a moment of respite where I can be like, oh, we watched a really good movie. No, Will. Like, <laughs> I know we're gonna get back into the shit, but I'm trying to enjoy this little tiny Actually, piece of paradise I have. There is one other movie. I, I don't know if it's from like 75 or 76, but I might add it to the podcast. If you want to, I'm down. Because, um, I fucking love it. I fucking love it, and, um, I'm, like, 90% sure you've never seen it, but I am also about 100% sure that you will fucking love it. 
So well, there might be another one let, for let, this year. I think we should keep that one a surprise. No, it'll be a surprise for. Let's not tell anyone, even me. Yeah. Don't tell me. Just let it let it happen. I won't even tell you like when we watch it. I'll just be like, oh, we're watching this today, and then you'll know. Cool. You'll watch it and be like, oh shit. Nice. <laughs> but we will get to the shit. Don't you worry. Oh, I know. Here's to 1975. Uh, this, for they mostly come in at night, this has been Will. And this has been Alex. And we will talk to you all later. Bye. Breathe. <laughs> <laughs>